Today we're taking a deep dive into intravenous magnesium sulfate. You might know it as IV magnesium sulfate. Mm -hmm. For pediatric asthma, mm -hmm. our goal is to help you feel really confident about when and how to use IV magnesium sulfate in your own practice. That's right. When is IV magnesium sulfate even something we should be considering for a child with asthma? Well, we typically consider IV magnesium sulfate for kids who are having moderate to severe asthma attacks, particularly when the standard treatments like inhaled corticosteroids and bronchodilators aren't giving us enough relief. Um, you know, it's an extra tool we can use when the first line approach isn't quite cutting it. So it's not about replacing those initial treatments, but more like working alongside them. Exactly. 5B magnesium sulfate is what we call adjunctive therapy. So it's used in addition to those main treatments. And the interesting thing is we've been using it for years, but we still don't completely understand how magnesium sulfate actually works in asthma. Oh, really? That's surprising. We're given this treatment, but we don't know exactly how it works. It's one of those things in medicine where sometimes what we do in practice gets ahead of the research. But the main theory right now is that IV magnesium sulfate acts as like a weak bronchodilator. So it helps relax the muscles that have tightened up in the airways, which makes it easier for air to flow. So it's like gently opening up those constricted airways and giving the lungs some space to breathe. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. It's not a cure-all or anything, but it can definitely help improve breathing in those kids along with the other crucial treatments. Okay, let's get down to the practical stuff. What is the standard dose of IV magnesium sulfate for a child, and how do we give it to them? The typical dose is 25 to 40 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, and it's given intravenously over 20 minutes. Okay. Now, there is a limit. The maximum dose is two grams, no matter how much the child weighs. And this can get kind of tricky for the nurses. Mm. A 20 minute infusion needs to be monitored very closely. Yeah. And we usually recommend watching the patient for two to three hours after the infusion is done. Makes sense. Yeah. Just to be safe and catch any potential problems early on. Right. Speaking of problems, let's talk about side effects. What are some things we need to watch out for when we're using IV magnesium sulfate? The good news is that for the most part, it's pretty safe. The side effect we see most often is hypotension, which happens in about 6 to 8% of patients. And hypotension can be dangerous, especially in children who are already struggling to breathe. Oh, yeah, for sure. Is there anything we can do to prevent that from happening? Absolutely. A lot of times we can prevent that drop in blood pressure by giving a fluid bolus right before we administer the magnesium sulfate. It's like giving their system a little extra fluid to help keep their blood pressure stable. That's a smart way to think about it. Are there any other side effects we should be aware of? Well, the other thing is just getting that IV access in the first place. You know, trying to get a needle into a child who's scared and having a hard time breathing. Well, that can be really difficult for everybody involved. Yeah, I can imagine. It's never an easy thing to do. And it just adds another layer of complexity to an already stressful situation. Exactly. So IV magnesium sulfate can be a really helpful tool, but it's definitely not without its challenges. That's for sure. Okay, so we've talked about when to use IV magnesium sulfate, how it works, the dosing, how to give it, and the potential side effects. Yeah. Now let's tackle the big question that I know is on everybody's mind. If we give a child IV magnesium sulfate, does that mean they're automatically going to be admitted to the hospital? That's where things get interesting. You know, it's true that when we give IV magnesium sulfate, it does make it much more likely that the child will end up being admitted. About nine times more likely, actually. Nine times. Wow. That's a huge difference. It is. But here's the thing. Not every child who gets IV magnesium sulfate actually ends up needing to be admitted. Okay. Now I'm really interested. What explains that difference? Why are some kids being sent home and others are staying in the hospital? Honestly, a lot of it comes down to the doctor just being cautious. There isn't a whole lot of evidence out there specifically about whether or not it's safe to discharge kids after they've been given IV magnesium sulfate. So doctors tend to play it safe. It makes sense. It's better to be safe than sorry, especially when we're talking about kids' health. Right. But it turns out there may be more to the story. Okay. Some studies, you know, looking back at past cases, suggest that kids who respond really well to the IV magnesium sulfate, where their symptoms get a lot better, might actually be okay to send home. So it's not just about whether or not they got the medication, but how they're doing afterwards. Exactly. And what's even more interesting is that these kids who do get sent home after 5V magnesium sulfate, they might be less likely to end up back in the emergency room compared to the kids who didn't get it at all. Wow. 
So it's not just about saving kids from an unnecessary hospital stay, mm -hmm. but maybe even preventing them from having to come back again later. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And all of this really points to the need for more research in this area. This has been super helpful already. But I am curious about one more thing. Mm. When in the course of treatment, should we be thinking about using IV magnesium sulfate? Ideally, the sooner the better. If a child comes in with a moderate to severe asthma attack, we should be thinking about it as soon as they arrive at the emergency department. Wow, so right away. Yeah, or at least within an hour of starting those first treatments with the corticosteroids and bronchodilators. So early intervention is key here. It's not a last resort. Huh. It's something we might use early on to try to get ahead of these really tough cases. Exactly. It's about giving these kids the very best chance for a quick and safe recovery. This has been such a great overview of using IV magnesium sulfate for kids with asthma. We've covered so much ground, but I feel like there's still so much more to explore. Oh yeah, absolutely. Even though we use IV magnesium sulfate a lot, the evidence for how well it actually works in kids with asthma isn't that strong. It's actually considered pretty weak. Wait a minute. So we've been talking about all these potential benefits, but now you're saying the evidence isn't even that strong. That seems kind of contradictory. I know. It's definitely something that causes confusion for a lot of people. A lot of doctors, including myself, we've seen IV magnesium sulfate work well. And it is included in a lot of the guidelines for treating asthma. But the research just hasn't really caught up yet. So it sounds like we're going off of anecdotal evidence and our own experiences in the clinic more than hard scientific data. Yeah, to some extent that's true. We really need to do those big, well-designed studies to really prove that it works and to figure out exactly which kids it helps the most. That's a good point. Oh. But even though the evidence isn't super strong, is it still considered a safe option and one that's easy to get? Yeah. It is. It is. And that's part of why we often use it early on, like we were talking about before, especially in those moderate to severe cases where the usual treatments just aren't doing enough. So it's like a bridge. Mm -hmm. It buys us some time while those other medications, the corticosteroids and bronchodilators, have a chance to start working. Yeah, I like that analogy. Yeah. It helps get the kids stabilized while those main treatments kick in. Makes sense. So if the evidence is so weak, how do we even know which kids are going to benefit from IV magnesium sulfate? I feel like we're working at a bit of a gray area here. That is the million dollar question. And unfortunately, there's no easy answer. It really comes down to using your best clinical judgment. We take into account how severe the attack is, how well the child is responding to those initial treatments, and any other things that might be relevant to that specific child. So there's no one size fits all approach. It's about really looking at each child as an individual. Exactly. And that's where experience and careful observation are so important. Well said. Thank you so much for joining us today on this deep dive into IV magnesium sulfate for pediatric asthma. We hope you found it helpful for your practice. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.